Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of hematopoiesis. All right, let's get started. Hematopoiesis is the process by which the body produces blood cells that are in plasma. A hematopoiesis is the lifelong process of continuous formation and turnover of blood cells to meet the everyday demands as well as to respond to increased demand due to injury or, or infections. So this is the process that results in the formation, development, and specializations of every single blood cell released into the peripheral blood from the bone marrow. So six months after fertilization, so still in utero, the bone marrow becomes the primary site of hematopoiesis and remains that way. There are other hematopoietic tissues in adults other than the bone marrow. Uh, so these are other sites that can perform hematopoiesis. However, the main site is the bone marrow. So these are, just as to note, um, other, hematopo other hematopoietic tissues uh, are the lymph node, the spleen, liver, and the thymus. But again, in adults, this is mainly occurring within the bone marrow. Hematopoiesis is governed by something we call hematopoietic cytokines. Um, these are a family of intercellular ligands that stimulate hematopoietic cells to differentiate into specific types of blood cells. So this is a cross-section diagram showing where the marrow is within the bone. It's located uh, within the medullary cavities of the bones in the ribs, vertebrae, sternum, and bones of the pelvis. So bone marrow is defined as the tissue that's located within the cavities of the cortical bones, uh, which consists of trabecular bone. So this re resembles a honeycomb with spaces within the bones for the cells to grow. The bone marrow is one of the largest organs uh, within the body and consists of two types, the red marrow and yellow marrow. The red marrow is considered hematopoietically active, so this means that it's actively producing blood cells. In an adult patient, the red marrow is found in the long bones, uh, bones of the pelvis, sternum, skull, scapula, and vertebrae, and also within the ribs. So the yellow marrow is, of course, considered hematopoietically inactive, meaning it's not actively producing blood cells. It's mainly composed of adipocytes, which are fat cells. In response to an increased demand for blood cells due to something like blood loss, the yellow marrow can revert back to active uh, red marrow to, to uh, start producing more blood cells. The bone marrow is a semi-fluid matrix that helps to anchor developing blood cells. It also helps to maintain the differentiation and proliferation of these cells. Stromal cells are defined as supporting tissue uh, or matrix of an organ. So let's talk about the stromal cells of the hematopoietic environment. Endothelial cells are broad and flat cells that form a continuous layer along the inside surface of the bone marrow sinus. These endothelial cells help to regulate the flow of particles leaving the bone marrow. Adipocytes, which we've discussed on the previous slide, are fat cells. So these are present within the bone marrow to uh, secrete steroids for the production of red blood cells and help to maintain the integrity of the marrow. Macrophages are cells that help to phagocytize and secrete cytokines uh, that help to regulate hematopoiesis. Osteoblasts are bone forming cells, whereas osteoclasts are bone resorbing cells. And lastly, reticular cells or fibroblasts are associated with the formation of fibers that form the lattice in the, uh, the marrow to support the vascular sinus and also to support the developing cells within that bone marrow. So again, hematopoiesis is the lifelong process of continuous formation and turnover um, of blood cells to meet everyday demands, as well as to respond to increased demand due to injury or infections. So this is the process that results in the formation, development, and specializations of every blood cell released into the peripheral blood from the bone marrow. And this depends on several things, cellular proliferation, differentiation, maturation, and apoptosis. And we'll talk about these here um, coming up. <clears throat> so apoptosis is programmed cellular death. So every cell has a programmed lifespan. And at the end of that lifespan, they die. So this is apoptosis. Proliferation is the process of the cell growing and dividing. 
So apoptosis and proliferation have to work together to make sure that they supply an adequate numbers of cells within the, the peripheral bloodstream. So we don't want to have a decreased cell level in the bloodstream, so not having enough proliferation happening to keep up with the apoptosis. And we don't want too many blood cells in the bloodstream, so not having enough apoptosis to keep up with the proliferation. So they have to work together to make sure that there is an adequate supply, not too much or too little. Differentiation is the process that is responsible for creating many cell populations with specific functions. So for example, monocytes and lymphocytes and erythrocytes. So those are many different cell populations with different functions. Now commitment is when two cells from the same precursor cell develop along different routes. So for example, we have a hematopoietic stem cell and one of these commits to becoming a lymphocyte and another commits to being a, a, an erythrocyte. So that is commitment. And maturation is the total process that starts from the time a cell is committed until it is fully mature. So for example, let's say a hematopoietic stem cell decides it's gonna become a neutrophil. So it first becomes a myeloblast, then a promyelocyte, then a myelocyte, then a metamyelocyte, then a banded neutrophil, and then a mature segmented neutrophil. The time it from the time that it decided it was gonna become a neutrophil until the time it became that mature segmented neutrophil, this is described as its maturation process. Now, if those cell lines confuse you like pros and metas and myelos and all that stuff, please check out my leukocyte lecture. It'll be super helpful. So precursor cells are less differentiated hematopoietic stem cells um, that are capable of proliferation. These are located primarily in the bone marrow and adult patients. These are responsible for the daily production of erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, and leukocytes, which are white blood cells. Uh, there are three uh, different types. Hematopoietic stem cells, which have the potential to become several cell lines. Progenitor cells are when the cell line is committed. It knows what it's going to be. So it's either going to be a lymphocyte or it's going to be a platelet. I mean, they, I'm just coming up with examples here. So it knows what it's going to be. And then maturing cells are those that are morphologically identifiable precursor cells. So the cells that you can look at and know what they are going to become. Progenitor cells know what they're going to be. They're committed to becoming what cells they're going to be uh, develop into. And it does this by being told what to do. So CFU, GEMM, which is colony uh, stimulating factor, CFU. Um, so GEMM gives rise to um, granulocytes, erythrocytes, monocytes, and megakaryocytes. CFUGM gives rise to granulocytes and monocytes. And CFUMK gives rise to megakaryocytes. Um, so please check out my other videos on blood composition, structure and function of hematopoietic organs, and then the erythrocyte and leukocyte lectures. It will very likely help you understand this lecture a little more. If I had the ability, I would have put all those lectures together so that way you get kind of like an all-encompassing lecture, but that video would be very, very long and I don't want to put people to sleep. <laughs> so I decided to do them in sections. <laughs> Alrighty, until next time.